Good morning. Good wife. As the youngest justice on the bench in the state of Illinois, I would like to say welcome. Justice. And I believe you have a motion, Mr. State's Attorney. I do, Your Honor. You are not a to justice. Introduce into evidence also, the video This is not a Cook County courtroom. It is too Cosco, nice. Cosco recently deceased. Yes, Your Honor. Hi. Um, I hate to object right off the bat here, but uh, the key word here is deceased. Benefits from the death. Ah, getting novel on us, Mr. Childs. This law is almost as new as I am. Oh. My apologies, Your Honor. I'm sorry. I found that humorous. Mr. Childs would like to prove my client is a murderer so he can prosecute him for corruption? Well, that is certainly novel. <laughs> mm. Well, novel or not, we will hear evidence on this alleged murder tomorrow. Honor, Mrs. Costco heard directly from her husband that if he were to die under mysterious circumstances, that it would be a Peter Floyd. This is Floyd hearsay. Why don't you exactly get such hearsay testimony? So let me get this straight. It allows for hearsay as long as a murder is established. And a murder is established here because there's a hearsay statement that establishes it. I mean, tell me when the snake actually devours its tail, okay? <laughs> Just okay, you're, you're ridiculing Look established Illinois law. Yes, Your Honor, gleefully. <laughs> Ooh. Well, I know I'm the uh, youngest judge on the bench, but yes, Your Would Honor, you stop we're saying all in that? Awe. You're not the youngest, okay? We're all in awe. <laughs> but I will overrule your objection. Given the Peterson law, this testimony is allowed. If you have a problem with that, you can take it up with the Supreme Court. Uh, okay. I, I really I'm really ready to hear Mrs. Costco's testimony, Ms. Tassioni. Yes, just one last objection, Your Honor. The Peterson law, as atrocious as it may be. Objection. Sustained. It requires that Mr. Florek not only profit from a murder, but be the instrument of that murder, correct? Are you asking me, Ms. Tassioni? Um, no, but you can answer if you want to. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay. Well, for Mr. Costco to be murdered, one key thing is required that we overlooked. And what is that, Ms. Tassioni? That he be dead. He ain't dead! Surprise, witness! Surprise, witness! Here he comes! <laughs> he's not dead, and he's... Uh, first of all, that guy, like, first of all, this did not happen in Cook County. Hell no. The courtroom was way too nice. Way too nice. There is not a court... <laughs> there is... What? They got lamps? They got, they got like this night. I mean, like- It's a at, new building. Okay. What is it about the Cook County? Like there's something specifically interesting about the various courthouses in Cook County, which is that- They old as shit and they look like prisons. Exactly. They are <laughs> horrifying. Like- and There's no windows in the court. Ain't no windows. No like, sunlight. Okay. At 26 and Cal, yeah, there's some windows in there, but the courtrooms are old and busted. It's not oh, this yeah, new, new- are hotness here and also you don't call a uh you know just a regular district court judge justice yeah it, this it is not just, new york also he doesn't just no judge is gonna get him like so as the youngest judge on the bench <laughs> i just want to like stick on my dick and let everybody woo, get on it just hop on that shit because yeah. nobody would care nobody gives a fuck how if you're the youngest or whatever we nobody don't care gives. also this can you do your job this is like they like people would just be all like in some instances yes people are all lined up and ready and waiting for the judge to come in but you would check in with the clerk yeah. or you check in with the the bailiff or whatever let them know that you're there especially now in the time of covid mm -hmm. sometimes they won't even let you come into the courtroom yeah. somebody will come out with and i know this is pre pre-pandemic i get yes. that but like you would never just be like waiting and then the judge comes in like hey y'all how y'all doing let's all talk about how great i am and booms and then suddenly the 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 guys are walking all around that's usually not how it works but also like that shit was so weird that like the state's attorney is like we're about to introduce evidence like we're not going to like establish who we are for the record we're yeah. not going to figure out what case it is like there's no clients around yeah we just start screaming I mean, the state doesn't have a client but like where's this florid person like what the fuck's going on here? Right. And also, this is not something like, first of all, you ain't never going to see this many people in a courtroom Hell just no. watching <laughs> some preliminary bullshit. Um, I mean, nowadays, you wouldn't see it in general. Like, the only time you see a lot of people sitting in a courtroom is because everybody there is, <laughs> is waiting a, to be called. Waiting to be called, right? If this is a criminal case, which it, I guess it is, it's a murder trial. So, like, I can understand why people might be there 
if they're waiting <laughs> but i don't understand this this would this is not a trial this would be a part of the preliminary matter we don't even yeah. know what what part of the case it is well, but you would weird hot you, hearsay on hearsay action well this is the kind of thing you would do it is hot hearsay on hearsay action <laughs> by the way as my as my friend and lawyer a colleague coined it hot hearsay on hearsay action like double hearsay is no joke like that is you know you can't get it in unless there's some kind of an exception now they're talking about some peterson law it must be some new case law or some new SCOTUS something that has some weird. It's interesting that he that they simultaneously said it's novel, and then he said this is established. Mm, if it's novel, that means people are definitely going to try to rip that shit to shreds. Exactly, and we would be the first ones <laughs> trying especially... to get questions asked, especially. And so, if the idea, it sounds to me, from what I can tell, is that they will allow. It sounds like. It almost sounds like it has its basis is what happens when you have an unavailable witness. Mm -hmm. Because the witness isn't available. The witness isn't available. When the witness isn't available, there are exceptions to the rules of evidence mm. that allow you to get those statements in, but they have to be like, like a dying declaration. Oh, I'm dying. And it was that guy what killed me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let it be known to all, twas Brutus what slain me. Oh, <laughs> dying declaration. I oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Improv, improv. We did it, Second City. We did it. But you know what I'm saying? There are times when you, if you, if the declarant is what yeah. the name of the is what the, that type of witness. If the declarant is unavailable, there are various ways that you can get their statements in. Yeah. Now it sounds here there's some new novel approach which is allowing you to get otherwise. Uh, hearsay statements in based on the fact that the person is dead which again sounds messed up yeah. <laughs> because the problem is it's very prejudicial like the reason why you don't want people coming in who weren't there to give statements is because we have no way to cross-examine yeah. them we have no and it's super prejudicial how do you establish their credibility like just because you're dead you're automatically credible right and that's what it like... sounds like and it sounds like the judge is definitely taking this and again do judges always know the law? No. No, not even most of the time sometimes. That's why we have to present them. Yeah, with... I mean, it's a lot of law out there. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, when I become a judge, will I know all the laws? No, I, you can't. You can't possibly. But that's why people actually bring you briefs and motions yeah. and they have the sites and they have the case law and you brief it for them and you say, hey, here's why we should suppress this because of X, Y, and Z. You give them the case law, you give yeah. them the rules. And they look at that and they're like, well, this persuades me. I'm cool with it. And keep it out. I just, I'm going to be real with you. This was the weirdest scene in a show that I feel like I've ever seen. Now, I'm not going to lie. I loved The Good Wife when I was in law school. I loved Elspeth Tassioni because she's a fucking card. But that was weird as hell. But the thing about it is, like, Elspeth Tassioni does all kinds of ridiculous, outrageous shit. But she's probably, like, the best lawyer on the show right. like. and i i did appreciate like the, the thing about this that i did like is that you know she did she acted in many ways the same way that i totally would yeah. like because have i kind of busted out laughing a little bit in court sometimes and like do you find this funny counsel uh, yes your honor i'm sorry uh i'll govern myself accordingly <laughs> like what do you want me to do like as best you can do like if the judge gets in your ass you just apologize yeah. that's all you can do and do you get yelled at by judges yes all the time yeah. it's kind of a thing it's kind of fun i sort of like it like, i don't mind i don't give a shit yeah like judges are people like they <laughs> people true. like mm -hmm. they not gonna i mean yeah you could hold me in contempt but we gonna fight that shit oh yeah but like i don't know like the judge was so like sensitive and yeah. it's just like chill out right like yeah. i couldn't imagine like a real judge being mad. like you came out here and made an ass of yourself but i'm the youngest justice on the bench you're a judge bro like we have justices on the supreme court right okay like, come on oh i can't wait everybody's favorite law professor slash lawyer annalise keating can i just say i am a hundred percent here for this lawyer realness that she is giving me <laughs> if i if i could walk into the law looking if i could walk into any courtroom looking as put together as this woman right here who you y'all bitches it's finished for you <laughs> it's finished for all you bitches because you can't tell me shit i mean her mug is beat and her I hear mug play. is beat for the gods honey my mother died um across the i i 
I'd say we were close. It's like I had a second mom. You felt that way even though Nanda was a Muslim immigrant? That was a pretty of good course. question. Josh, do you recognize the screen name Barfly22? I don't think so. Sure about that? Judge, he yeah. answered the question. Your Honor, I'd like to enter Defense objection. Exhibit A. It's a printout from the alt-right website, strivingtruth.com. Josh, can you read the highlighted comments posted she by She should have Barfly asked for permission 22? to approach. Yeah. <clears throat> These Muslims have radicalized our communities, and no one stops them. You want your child praying to Allah instead of Jesus? That's... Despicable. I agree. Mm. Why'd you write it? I didn't. My tech expert told me that the IP. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. no. Objection! Objection! <laughs> Where's the foundation? She laid no foundation for this whatsoever. <laughs> she just had him read some random words. Yeah, first of all, you can't just like pull a paper out and be like, I'm gonna show this to the witness, Judge. Here you go. What do you think? Of read it, won't you? Like, I have been, I definitely killed this bitch right here. Oh, that's awful. Like, like <laughs> The other attorney was right to object, but the first thing you do is, when you have exhibits, you have to create an exhibit list. You share that list yeah. with the other side. Everybody knows What's what exhibits, be right? Because we have what's called a pre-trial conference. <laughs> and we get together and we talk about, are there gonna be any motions in limine? Are we gonna be talking mm -hmm. about any stipulations? Because sometimes it's faster and more economical to stipulate that we're going to put some stuff in and we're going to agree that this stuff is okay. This stuff can yeah. get in. We're going to use, we, we both, we like, we're going to, we're going to stipulate to these things. We're not going to argue about mm -hmm. them. But they can you, just go to the jury. Yeah. The jury can just see this shit. We all agree that this is, this is relevant. They need to see this stuff, but you're not going to ever have an instance where you just pull something out that your tech expert found last night. I'm sure, because that's how this always works on these shows. <laughs> the tech's like, Oh my God, Annalise, this is like five hours before trial. You won't believe this thing. I just now found <laughs> like, no, you're never getting that in. You would literally have to have a special, uh, a special, a you would have to have a sidebar with the judge and say, listen, judge, we found this thing. And the judge will be like, now you find you're telling me now. I mean, this could be grounds for a mistrial, yeah, honestly. I mean, if it was the other side, now let, I'm she's the defense attorney. Mm. So if it was the state that suddenly is coming up with some stuff that they didn't give you, that's a Brady violation right there. Yeah. Like that's because, and we know that exonerating material that is not turned over by the prosecution, that's a mistrial right there. Mm. I mean, that's a Brady violation. You can't do it. It happens all the time though. It's unconstitutional. Completely unconstitutional. And it has... It has it has ended in many cases being overturned, overturned. Or exonerations and all kinds of exactly. Things. So what she's doing here is improper. <laughs> Shit is so weird. She just like my tech expert found it. Yeah, you can't just do that. You Where he at? Yeah, you would have to bring him up as as I mean the only way to do. I mean I don't even know how you would get something in like this that hadn't previously been turned over and that they wouldn't have already maybe drawn the sting yeah and when i say draw the sting i mean you know there's bad shit because you always got bad facts right always you're never going to have 100 percent beautiful facts you're always going to have some bad facts that you have to neutralize mm -hmm. and so if they know and, and of course what we do as defense attorneys is we anticipate what the other side is going to do and we and we moot that shit so i'll mm. pretend to be the prosecutor and i will actually like i will do the cross the practice cross i will do the i will do the practice direct we will mm -hmm. we will move this out because we want to know what the potential things are that they're going to bring out but our job is not to prove that our client didn't do that shit <laughs> We're, our job is to prove they can't prove that they did exactly that's all they got to do so for her to come in with this new shit i, I mean I'm not even sure the proper way, like she would have to, I think if, if you, if you have some, some stuff you pulled off the interwebs, mm -hmm. right. You're going to have to lay foundation for that. Yeah. And how do you prove that he was the one that did yeah, it? Yeah. Like, how do we know this is him? Just her assertions. Yeah. Cause she's just baldly asserting him. Like I've got this paper. I, my, my, my IT guy says you did it. So what'd you say to that? Exactly. Like That's the a, IT guy who worked for me. Dame Dayo. That is a no go y'all. <laughs> no, no. Let's see how this plays out. Is that true? I didn't have time to check. So on still you didn't have time to check. You? That is malpractice. Remember, under oath. Nobody will ever say that. Remind you, you're under oath. That is some bullshit. We have free speech in this country. You so do? 
whatever it is you think that I wrote. This hateful, anti-Muslim rhetoric. It does Objection. not make That's, me a murderer. You know what? I would agree with you if you had made up the story that your mother wanted a divorce. Objection! Question. Uh, is there a question she told here? You that? Can you back him up on that, Anna? Who's Objection! Your what? what? Nanda was walking to the mosque that night, so when you saw a woman in a hijab, you ran over your own mother. That's how incompetent a killer you I are. I was nowhere near the house. Oh, Where's so the question? Cameras can prove that. Why GPS is the judge letting this continue? Why is everybody sitting around like this is okay? That public defender was right about you. Letting real criminals loose on the streets sets us This back would up. never happen! It's Keating, you've made your point. You're the one who killed a white woman here, not me. Why? Oh. Did you feel abandoned by your mommy? You were worse than the rest of them. Was it just hate? Because your mother chose to love a brown woman and still you, you are stain on this country, just like her! Oh. Oh. <gasps> I mean, I'm living for her performance, though. I mean, she's, I mean, but what, she's giving me life, but... But also, what is this supposed to tell us? I have no like, idea. He's a racist? There, sure. were, there were no questions there. Uh, that is not a proper question. epic. No, no it was not! <laughs> <laughs> when he hit that final shot in this is what you get <laughs> when your defense team is comprised of a bunch of what else who have yeah. one semester of crib law under their belts. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> that was... Why? That was nuts. So like that was some good TV though. That I mean, was good TV. Gripping, gripping. But, but I, I remember this show came out when I was in law school, and I was just like, and you know, I tried to watch it because she's a law professor. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I just like finished my one L year. Like, let me see what's going on here. And the way she came into the class on the first episode, I was like, can't watch this. It was just horrible it's so like, cringy because she like it's like the first day of law school and she's like kind of like on legally blind where it's like the first day of law school like they're talking about i have this amazing internship in my law firm blah 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 like blah, blah. no and uh... it's like what and me and she like her law firm is at her house which is fine we work at home yeah but it's like in her first floor. So all her staff is in her house. Then her students come to her house. It just gets really weird. Didn't that Yale professor get in trouble for having all those dinners with like Amy, Amy Chua or whatever oh, that got like that, the, that tiger got, mom lady. the tiger mom lady got in trouble for that because she was having all these dinners at her house. Mm. And it was pretty clear. She was like, whole like there's a lot of ethical issues i think the problem is you can't be a full-time doctrinal professor and also be a full-time defense attorney <laughs> number one law schools don't want practitioners that's the thing that i found the most ob obnoxious about the show is that is the assumption that that a law school would actually welcome a practitioner of her stature to teach a doctrinal class. Because typically what happens, mm. the professors go to the fancy law schools, even if they come to your very unranked or low ranked <laughs> law school, or even just a, you know, a community law school mm -hmm. like DePaul, like the one that we went to, uh, none of the people that we had, would you stop punching my partner? Not cool, dude. Anyway, um, <laughs> so like uh, all of the pro profs that I had, they went to Harvard, mm -hmm. Yale, uh freaking um nyu georgetown ucla like they yeah. went to the big fancy mm -hmm. you had to go to a big fancy school none of them had much like they maybe see to be a lawyer to be a fancy law professor you have to have at least gone to a big law firm or something and done some scholarship you didn't really do a lot of yeah practice you don't practice. practice because the thing is they don't value practice at law school. Of course not. That's the problem. Like the more you know how to practice, the more likely you're going to be getting paid $1,500 mm -hmm. as an adjunct mm -hmm. and then telling people what they really need to know. But the, the people who Dude, actually- people I learned so much. So from, much. So much. I love my, uh, like, it's interesting. Now, people, I don't like prosecutors as a general rule, but my professors for advanced criminal procedure were two U.S. attorneys, assistant U.S. attorneys. And they like knew that shit backwards and forwards. Yep. Like yep. they taught us and like they had us reading like opinions and stuff like that. And they really weren't like, I really expected them to be kind of shitty and like trying to convince us all to be pro state, but they weren't. Like they even criticized like Scalia and like Ooh, some of his like ridiculous okay. like opinions, like the one where he was like mere innocence. They were like, this is a terrible like miscarriage of justice. I can't believe this is what a Supreme Court justice wrote. None of us should believe in this. Like, you know, like, but the people who practice, they teach you so much because like, 
then people who are professors, a lot of them never practiced. They're just scholars, which there's no problem with them being scholars. But I, did, I didn't learn anything about practicing from those Because they don't practice. And that's the thing. That's why I found this very weird. Because first of all, who has the time? Nobody would have the time to do both. Because the amount of work that you do to be a professor, I mean, you're teaching these doctrinal classes and sometimes they give you several sections. You have to grade all those exams. You got to do a bunch of scholarship. You got to write. Yeah. You gotta do a lot. And you don't have time to be actually prosecuting murder case or defending murder cases, but also you are not going to put some first year law student on a murder case ever, 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 ever. It just would not happen. It would not happen. Do we have a 3 year working on some murders? Yes, we do. Because she's had two years of law school. She knows how to write. Because at this point, you don't even know how to write. (laughs) You don't even know. Like, she has these 1Ls come in and work for her before they've even, like, had a final exam. They haven't done anything. You don't even know if they understand how to, quote, unquote, think like a lawyer. Because that takes some time. Reading, because, like, what they do, like, law school is not about pretending to be a lawyer all day and night. It's about reading appellate cases over and over and over again. That's all it is. So you can learn how to think. So you can learn how to think and learn how to digest this stuff. It's different. One semester of law school, I would even say two years of law school isn't necessarily enough. Although like in Illinois, when you get to be a second year law student, when you've had a certain number of credits, you can apply for what's called a 7-Eleven license Mm -hmm. and you can work in, you know, a public defender's office. You can work in the state's attorney's office. You can work at the public guardian or one of the Mm -hmm. other places like that. And in you act nonprofits. in some nonprofits, and you actually do get to practice law supervised, but they're not giving you a murder. They're giving you a traffic case <laughs> or misdemeanor. Maybe. Or yeah. They're not giving you a felony. You're not going to be, you're not going to be defending felonies or prosecuting felonies as a second year law student. It's yeah. not happening. Y'all. You know, though, I do wish that the 7-Eleven students could like work for like, you know, businesses and stuff like that. Cause I feel like some 7-Eleven students would get some great experience working at like these, especially like JEP firms and other like solos and small firms. Like, I just think about the fact that like, I was a 7-Eleven and I just like, you know, I helped some people with their foreclosures. I helped some people, like some nonprofits, like review their like, um, what's it called? 501c3 status. But like, I didn't, that didn't, I didn't really feel like that helped me be a lawyer like I feel like working at the public defender's office is probably good um working at even working at the prosecutor's office is probably good like I know on a couple of my traffic cases the only person who comes to court is the like three the 7-eleven and I'm like this is bizarre but okay well actually the last time the last time we were in court for that DUI trial it was the day that the um the the 7-eleven just found out that they had passed the bar exam and the judge was so nice and like all the attorneys came out and they're like i just want to let everybody know that this person just passed the bar exam and they're going to be licensed they're going to be getting a job offer here and everybody's like yay you did so great and that was it was nice to see that kind of appreciation and we did appreciate that even though it's like you're going to the dark side (laughs) but good job you you did it you did it that's awesome So this is inventing Anna, the Anna Delvey, the fake German heiress. Um, We, when this show came out, I was blowing up Robert's phone like, you will not believe (laughs) the lawyering is so bad. BK won't watch the show with me because I won't stop screaming at the TV. (laughs) The lawyering is pretty trashy. He's pretty bad, but like, uh this scene is where he goes in to talk to Anna about her options and uh, we've been many times to the jail and talked to our clients and explained to them you know what are your rights what are your options what kind of like can we file some motions Mm -hmm. are there some things we can get suppressed are there certain things like but uh, well we'll watch the scene how it plays out and you'll see our reactions um hopefully they'll be as genuine as they were the first time (laughs) i'm sure they will because i don't i was so (laughs) upset at this show that i don't remember anything about it except that it was terrible lawyer (laughs) so bad you okay she ain't okay she's okay that's one way to look at it i also beat two out of three of your biggest charges you don't have to like how i got there but let me explain it to you you should have explained it to her before you did that shit, though. 
Oh, this is at the end. <laughs> the jury, they they saw through you, right? They they saw how close I was to the money, to ADF. They saw through Rachel's bullshit. I, 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 I didn't need to fuck over my friends for 60 grand when those fucking frat boys at Fortress were willing to hand over 20 million. He makes a good point though. I mean, the sexism <laughs> in VCs they, is rampant. They saw me. I was dangerously close and they saw that. Well, she's selling her art that she made in jail for like $20,000 for these Now things. the world is oh, so 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 I am not an idiot. I'm not some she's still trying to make money in art. I mean, hey, good for her. You got to get on your hustle. She's still a young woman. Yeah. She definitely ain't coming back here. I'm a she did get deported. I'm not sure if uh, she ended up in Germany, if the deportation actually held, or if she's still appealing it. But she did get sent to What's ICE. The appeal? <laughs> I'm That's a German a heiress. Thing. I'm a real German heiress. I'm not a fake German heiress. You can't deport me. I mean, her acting was great. I will give it to her. I don't know what kind of accent the she's accent given. Is a troche. But it really gets across the oh, fakeness man. of this character. And if she didn't understand Russian, that shit had me flying. Okay, so we're about to do a little bit of classic <laughs> uh, Futurama here. Uh, my favorite genre is the uh, I'm just a simple country lawyer. <laughs> your honor i'm just a simple hyper chicken from a backwoods asteroid but if it please the court i reckon i'll call the entire jury members of the jury <laughs> yeah, yeah. Happen to catch a gander at who blew up that their dupe headquarters that's the guy oh, right there and are y'all gonna vote to convict him I mean, you better believe it. <laughs> the jury is instructed to disregard its own testimony your honor <laughs> The prosecution rests. <laughs> now, Pramila, I know it's scary in that there witness box, but taint no need to fear me. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought you was corn. Now, would you please point at that robot over there? <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's improper. That's not a hell. Questions. These identifications work, though. It's, it's true. It's not proper, but Daddy this is done a cheap good, lawyer. Huh? Cheap, cheap, cheap. Son, as your lawyer, I declare y'all are in a 12-piece bucket of trouble. <laughs> when I done struck you deal, five hours of community service cleaning up that old mess you caused. Five hours? Oh, man, couldn't you just got me the death penalty? <laughs> I'd have done better, but it's plumb hard pleading a case while awaiting trial for that, the uh, incompetence. Oh, yeah, yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> Not you Your Honor, your lawyer I move jail. that I be disbarred for introducing this evidence against my own client. Absolutely. Uh, yes. <laughs> I'm a simple country hyper chicken, but I know when we're finger licked. What do you say we plead insanity? A few months in an insane asylum? I could do that standing on my head. If you start now, it might help our case. Oh, Counselor, what evidence do you offer to support this new plea of insanity? Well, for one, they done hired me to represent... A hyper chicken uh, that I've ever come across, but, uh, you know, identification. <laughs> it's interesting that this was, that he, he did have that thing about identification. First of all... You have to be very careful when you make an identification in court mm -hmm. because you obviously can't say, you can't just start pointing at somebody like, is this, uh, you know, five foot eight African-American man with a button <laughs> nose and dreadlocks in the suit over there? The person that definitely killed that person? <laughs> um, no, that's no, 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 no. You definitely got to lay a foundation if you're going to do, if you're going to do mm. any kind of identification, you have to lay. And when we say lay a foundation, we mean you got to get the basics out. You got to make sure mm -hmm. the person was there to see the thing or the person has a reason to have been there. And they're, they're going to testify to the fact that mm -hmm. the, the day that the where, why, what, how, before we get to the, what you have to have all the other stuff mm -hmm. leading up to that. So you're never going to get up there and start pontificating about, <laughs> I'm just a simple little 
tiny white lady. <laughs> I don't go in for this foo-for-all <laughs> like evidence and rules. So I'm going to call the jury to testify. Call him a jury. That is some hilarious shit. That would, yeah, that's obviously improper. You definitely need to go to a new venue. <laughs> so accurate. No that's chance. so accurate. I have one last clip I want Robert to watch with no context whatsoever. I'm springing this on him. This is a classic. I'm totally aging myself by introducing this, but I can't help being a middle-aged lady <laughs> <laughs> any more than he can help being a millennial. So we just have to, we just have to, uh, to deal with it. So this is a goodie. Uh, it's an oldie, but a goodie. Um, this, this, this arcans back to my childhood. I mean, Yes, I'm older significantly than Robert. I'm not that old, <laughs> but um, I remember this fondly from my childhood. So let her rip. All right. 100,000 years ago, a caveman was out hunting on the frozen wastes when he slipped and fell into a crevasse. In 1988, he hey. was discovered by some scientists and thawed out. He then went to law school That's and became what else? Class. <laughs> unfrozen caveman lawyer. Yes, unfrozen caveman lawyer. He used to be a caveman, but now oh, he's a lawyer. Unfrozen <laughs> caveman lawyer. Oh, God. You this by is gas Plus actually gives you gas for those okay. times when you feel like being the Joker. Ooh. And by National Escort Service. Oh, if hey. we don't get a prostitute to your door within 15 minutes, well, you I don't mean, that's pay. basically grinder. <laughs> and by Happy Fun Ball, still legal in 16 states. It's I did, it's let me just point out, I did get a lawn dart in my leg Tonight's when those things were legal. Not fun, y'all. Not fun. Lawyer. Mr. Keyrock, are you ready to give your summation? It's just key rock, Your Honor, and yes, I'm ready. Thank you. <laughs> Check that watch. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I'm just a caveman. I fell in some ice and later got thawed out by some of your scientists. So accurate. This is basically your daredevil, right? Yeah. Confuses me. Sometimes the honking horns of your traffic make me want to get out of my bmw oh. and run off into the hills or whatever come on humble brag. I know, sometimes right? when i get a message on my fax machine i wonder did little demons get inside and type it i don't know <laughs> my creative mind can't grasp these concepts but you're a lawyer but there is one thing i do know when a man like my client slips and falls on a sidewalk in front of a public library, then he is entitled to no less than two million dollars <laughs> <laughs> and two million dollars in punitive damage. Mm. Ooh. Thank you. That's a lot of punitives, though. Right. The jury will now retire to deliberate. Your Honor. Wait, is there not another side? We don't need to retire. Key Rock's words are just as true now as they were in his time. <laughs> we give him the full amount. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. The jury ain't supposed to clap. <laughs> no clapping from Did the jury. Did you hear that, Mr. Keyrock? Hang on a second. I I'm sorry, Your Honor. I was listening to the magic voices coming out of this strange modern invention. <laughs> Cell phones were too the moment they were invented, okay? He's running for governor, I think. Thank you. But he's got the kids with Thank you very much. Thank you. First of all, let me say how happy I am to be your nominee for the United States Senate. Where was he on Thursday? Could he actually. You know. Mm -hmm. Thank Where did you. they you find know, this thing? Really because if he didn't come from this continent, I don't think he's qualified. Or your system of checks and balances, because as I said during the campaign, I'm just a caveman. I fell in some ice and later got thawed out by scientists. But there is one thing I do know. We must do everything in our power 
to lower the capital gain yes. tax. Yes. <laughs> it's so true. Even in his time, it was true. Go on, Key Rock. Yes, bitch. Yes. Oh Lord. Classic. That is classic. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I had to, I had to. I actually appreciate that. Thank you for introducing me to that. <laughs> you know, the funny thing about Unfrozen Caveman Lawyer is that it was so influential to people of my generation that literally when I was in law school, I would do this all the time. And it was just the bane of my existence <laughs> that everybody was 10 years younger than me. <laughs> and nobody got the reference because I would say... <laughs> Your Honor, I'm just a caveman. See, I didn't know what that was. I've been sitting here thinking, is that a Futurama reference? Is that a um, Family Guy or some kind of reference? I didn't know what it was. And then at one time, I thought you were doing, who's the dude that is A from Happy Days? Fonzie. Well, yeah, I, I mean, was like, yes, I Fonzie, don't know. Is that some shit he did? I was obsessed with Fonzie when I was four years old. <laughs> I There is a picture of me with pigtails on a swing set with knee-high socks that say, hey, and it's a picture of Fonzie going, hey. I love Fonzie. I, I think it was the leather jacket. I wanted to be Fonzie, but like, serious. Ir ironic, not ironically, coincidentally, Harry Win Henry Winkler played that really bad attorney on um, Arrested Development. Mm. So there is a, a connection to him being Fonzie and also being a really bad lawyer, but my fa the crazy the crazy thing about unfrozen caveman lawyer is he's not a bad attorney. <laughs> I mean, he's he actually really thing. good. He got the drip. He got that bag. He's on his hustle. I hey. mean, he got four million dollars for his client who broke his arm. Like that's dope. I'm <laughs> for a broken arm. For a broken bad. arm. Come on now. That's just that's good lawyering right there. I'm 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 sad to say that the best lawyer we've seen today is literally a caveman who fell in a crevasse a hundred thousand years ago and was frozen <laughs> by our scientists. Hey, he's basically born the same year as me. There you go. There it is. Well, we hope you've enjoyed our reaction videos today. Please uh, tell us in the comments um, some more uh, things you would like us to react to. There's hella stuff out there. There's definitely a lot of things that we're definitely looking into. So let us know in the comments if you want to. Subscribe, like, do all those things. Send us some money by Venmo. We're cool. <laughs> like, whatever. It's cool. We'd, we'd be happy to take that money off your hands. <laughs> always. But as always, I'm Chef Kimberay Russell Esquire. And I'm always Chef Rob. And we will see you next time on The Sous Chefs. Hey.